Hi, good day and welcome to Just Stuff. And today I want to show you this package called Finance Go. And what this package package allows you to do is to get market data. So if you think about like the stock market, for example, and you want to get information about, let's say, Google or Apple or any company that's traded on the stock market, you can use this package to get like the current um, asking price, you know, bid price, um, historical information in terms of what was that price um, three months ago, six months ago. And so today I just want to show you a very simple application. Now, recently I've been setting a goal for myself of trying to make this video 20 minutes or less. Um, if you follow my other playlist, you'll see I've been failing on that. So let's see if this video can come in at under 20 minutes. So let's get started. If you don't mind, do me a huge favor while I get to my command line and start up my Visual Studio Code editor. Do me a huge favor and hit the subscribe button if you haven't subscribed already, but definitely please hit the like button on this video. Really, really appreciate it. Um, here I am in my Just Stuff directory, and uh, we're gonna go with part one of um, Go Finance. So that's uh, episode six for us, and we do now. Um, so in my Visual Studio Code, I don't have anything, so I'm gonna start by creating the exercise one directory, and right away I'm gonna go to a Go Mod file and module. I'm gonna call this SMA for um stock market app okay good and see that and then i'll close this i'll get my main going and so and it looked like it created that outside of my example directory so i just drag that back in there and so the first thing is to um sort of get our main function here and um what I'll do is I'll create a variable called symbol and um, let's use CLDR as the stock symbol. And so let me make sure that I have my package and all that good stuff there. And now I want to be able to use this package called Finance Go. This package, um, if you go to Go Dev and you search for finance.go, you're gonna to come to this page and it's show you documentation. And it tells you where you can find it in GitHub and all this other stuff. But what we're interested in is, um, you know, what the package is. And it says this Go package aims to provide a Go application with access to current and historical financial market data in streamlined, well-formed structures. And so they have a client application, which I have not used, but you are free feel free to check it out. This is the different types of um, stock market data you can get. So you can get quotes, equities, index, all this other good stuff. And they pull this stuff from Yahoo Finance, which doesn't matter for us where they pull it from, so long as it's up to date. They also tell you though, um, there's some example at this website, and this is the website. Um, I'm gonna probably mispronounce this, but I would say this is what Piquet. Um, so, this uh, the documentation here and they give you some basics of using um, this package so you can see one of the easiest thing to do is to do quote that get and give it a symbol which is a string and then the title this returns a finance well from the package finance um, that quote so and the structure look like this big old thing here but we're not going to worry with that for now we're going to simply do the most basic thing and so we're going to say um, let's do quote that get and for me because I've done this before it pulls in the right package but if um, it doesn't find the right package for you just simply just copy and paste it from above here so there's a nice little copy paste button over there all right so now that um, I'm gonna call this and I have my symbol and you can see this returns a finance that quote and then an error. So for now, I'll just say I want a quote. I don't care about the error. I don't expect to get any, but I don't care about it right now. And I want to print out some information about this quote. So let's say we do FMT and we do print line, oh, print F, sorry. And then we say, well, um, maybe we want to, let's do something like this, send V and then maybe something like this by saying Q, that's short name. 
Um, and so let's save this and just run this. This is our basic example. So let's do go into the example one directory, go build. Um, and I'm not consistent here. So sometimes I use go build, sometimes I don't. Um, sometimes I just run the example. And so you can see here we go cloud error. All right, so maybe I should do like a new line over there and go back here and run. And so there we go. Oh, I should do go run. See, this is, there we go again. I'm not consistent and bam, there we go. All right, so what are some of the other things that we can um, get? Well, if we do FMT, the print F and we do like, what's the current price, for example? And percent, um, so we do dollar sign percent V and new line and another Q that ask price. Uh, okay, so that seems like something we'd want to know with just the uh, current asking price. Um, so if you wanted to buy, what are people asking for one of these, for the one cloud air stock? And it looked like it's $7.70. Um, we'll worry about formatting just correctly as a currency later uh, with two decimal places. But for now, we just sort of want to explore some of the things that's available. And there are a few more fields, of course, we saw from the documentation. There are tons of other fields. But two of the other ones that I like looking at are the 52-week high and the 52-week low. So between a year, what was the highest price? What was the lowest price? And so if we run that, we get that our Cloudera had a high um, within the last year of $52.22 and the lowest at some point, you know, was $4.76. In the future, we'll see how to, in the next video, part two, we'll see exactly how we can so, sort of plot a chart showing all the values, let's say for the past three months, six months, whatever we want, uh, we can ask for that information. All right, so at least we we know to get started. Let's make our application slightly better. So. The symbol is not hard coded and we could pass it in the command line. So let's go to exercise two. And so here we go. Um, all right. So one of the things I'd like to do is to be able to get the symbol from the user so that they can pass in and ask for any stock. So um, what I'm going to use is the flag package. And I'm going to say parse. And the reason why is because I don't want to actually have the user type any parameter name or anything. But because I want to get rid of anything else that might be passed on the command line, I just get anything that comes after all those other arguments are parsed. So I'll say that oh, the symbol that I'm looking for is actually from flag.arg. And it's the very first symbol. So something like that. And so there we go. And then, um, but before I try to get the first symbol, I want to make sure that um, I have enough arguments. So, so essentially, um, what I want to say is parse the arg arguments. If we don't have anything, actually means I don't have a symbol that was passed in. So then I will just end the program with a nice error message, an example about the color program. And then um, I know for sure args of zero, OS args of zero is always going to be valid because that's always the, your program name. And so if we proceed, then I can take that very first argument from the flags at args, and I can use that to get our quote. So again, very minor change. So if I do go, you know, run example to main, for example, and I run it with nothing, I get that error message. And again, we get this long, nasty path because we're doing go run, as opposed to if I build it and run it. And so I could run this again and do a CLDR. And just as before, AAPL, for example, Apple. And we can do like Google. I think this is fun. <laughs> just be able to, to get all the stack information. INTC, I believe it, Intel, and AMD. I'm just having way too much fun with this. So now we um, sort of have a slightly better application. But so in this example, what I like to do is um, right now we're formatting the currency ourselves. There is a package for that, right? Accounting. So I'll use this accounting package to format our currency. And it's very easy to use. You pretty much create a, an object, you know, variable like this um, that has all the, the symbol you want to use, the precision, 
and then from there you just simply say format money and so um, let me do that here so we want currency format object is accounting that accounting and we want to say symbol in the case my case dollar sign precision is two because i want two decimal places and then from here on out what i want to be able to do so then we just need to call cf that format money and we call it on these three we do that and then now we can get rid of the dollar sign that we put in place there and we save we go here and we do go and we run ex example three with cldr and there we go so we have the number format and notice how we have the two decimal places we don't have to sort of worry about it um so we can do it apple and google and there we go a thousand dollars two thousand you know um zero cents um all right so this is our final dandy so we can format things we can get quotes but right now we're only passing one symbol at a time and so it would be nice to be able to pass if i wanted these three quotes i should be able to just pass these three symbol and that's very very easy to do well first of all we need to just get the set of symbols that are passed on the command line so let's go to example four so you copy paste i says example four now let me close this to make sure i'm working on the right thing and so this is easy so no argument provided expected at least one at least one symbol and the example would be supplying something like cldr it doesn't we don't, we don't really care for it to be uppercase and something like google you know aapl until you know amd something like that so on and on and on and on all right and so the only thing we need to do now is to get out of these extra parameter is just save flags that arts that's it and now that we have um symbols that's what we need to do we we need to do this in a we need to get a list of symbols so for that what we do is we call list so we say list instead of get so we get a symbol and this returns an iterator and so the iterator this function does not have an error so you just get an iterator back and then now that you have an iterator you can sit in a loop and go over each one of those symbols so you can say for iter that next and in the next returns true if there's a value to a next value so you sit there calling this and if there's no next value return false and then this would just exit so if this is true then we can say our quote is i iter that quote and one of the things we might want to do since we have multiple of these is that we might want to use some sort of separator something like this you know to as a separator between each line so i uh, don't need that and yep um let's see so very simple change so we go let's go run example four and like i say uh, oh let's start with this one here we go that works what about apple that works and yes and cldr and intel and amd and so i think that's pretty cool right that we can write such a simple program get some financial information and we can see you know all this stuff now there are many more um, values that are provided for a quote and um, you saw that here um, when we look on the documentation page to say that oh, a quote actually has you know the symbol the short name which is what we've been using um, the bit ask price and bit price and all these other things um, there's just a ton of information so um, i'm going to um, do an example where I use some of those other extra fields and again use anything you want so 
let's call this example five. This is going to be our last example. Um, in the next part, we'll use the fact that we can get financial information and tie that in with the fact that we know how to plot charts with go e chart. And we'll see if we can just get some like, you know, financial information for past few months, plot it on a chart, compare them. Maybe that might give us, if you're interested in doing this and um, buying stocks, it can give us an idea of whether we should buy or whatever, or we should sell, right? So basically um, I've used our formatter, money formatter to print out the asking price, which we had before, bid price, because if you're thinking about buying, you might want to see how much other people are bidding for the stock. Um, um, you know, pre-market price, what it look like it's going to open at before the market starts, um, the 50 day average price, the 200 day average price. And then we already had 52 weeks high and low. And again, just more information. That's really, that's all that is. So if we clean this up and we run example five, our last example, basically you just have more information. Um, no, and that did not work. Oh. I made the mistake I, I, I was afraid of, which is I did this in example four. So let's copy this, undo our changes, go to example five and paste it there. So that's our example five. And so let's clean up and run this. And as you can see, all that extra information, look at that pre-market price is zero. So why is the pre-market price zero? Well, because the markets are now open. Now, if the markets weren't open, pre-market price would be what it looks like the price is going to be when the market opens. So um, that's why that's zero. So don't be alarmed if you see that's a zero. All right. So hopefully um, you learn something, you find this interesting. I think it's super cool. So we'll tie this in to some charts. And so we can see this now on a chart, you know, and see trend lines and all this other good stuff. I think that's pretty cool. All right, um, so that's it. I'm gonna cut it here. Um, <laughs> if you haven't hit the like button, what are you waiting for? Please hit the like button for me. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Hit the notification bell so you can be notified when I post new videos. I appreciate you watching. Thank you for your time. Um, take care, stay safe, and see you in the next video. Bye, have a great day.